Alright, well, let's go ahead and give this a shot. Playing from the depths. I've seen a lot of questions on forums about how do you survive in the campaign. Well, I am not an expert, but I do survive in the campaign, so without further ado, let's start a campaign and I'll show you what I do to survive. New game. Quest for Netter will pit you against all factions, whereas Onyx Watch will only pit you against, the, naturally, the Onyx Watch faction. However, the Onyx Watch campaign starts you off much, much faster. In Quest for Netter, you have an hour and a half of nothing, unless you go, you go looking for a fight, whereas Onyx Watch will start off attacking you pretty much instantly. Difficulty modifier, I'm not going to modify that. I don't need to make it easier, but I'm not going to make it harder on myself that way. Growth factor, how fast will they expand, how fast will they reinforce things, and how many fleets will they send after you? I like blowing crap up, so send as many as you want. Resources given by destroying the enemy. The Onyx Watch, their craft are enormous, so you don't really need that to be too high. Design difficulty, uh, well, I'm not an expert, so I'm not going to be putting it up here, but, you know, a nice 250 bonus, a, a nice 250% multiplier to experience can't be argued with. And begin the campaign. So, this is your starting fortress. And you'll notice that I am sliding off. So the first thing you need to do is you need to get to a chair before you fall into the water and, well, nothing bad will happen, but it might piss you off a little bit. This is your starting fortress. It has a few big guns. A few more guns, a moderate sized engine, one refinery, a tiny little crystal farm, and a whopping ten resource gatherers, five of each. Now most people will have close to forty of each in their main fortress, so this isn't really all that helpful. They do, however, start you off with a very nice accompanying ship, this little guy. He is completely AI controlled, so he'll do everything on his own. First thing you need to do is increase the number of resource gatherers you have. You'll notice I'm not getting much out of them. So, I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to make a hole. So get rid of all these. For those that are curious, I just entered mirror mode. This means whatever I do on this side of the mirror will be replicated over here. So, by getting rid of this, you notice there are one, two, three here, one, two, three here. So by getting rid of this, I also get rid of the one over here. It's mirror. Imagine mirror mode acts like a mirror. what to call this. Is this a guide? Is this a let's play? I don't know. Regardless, I'm gonna make a door here. Oh, you can see the first enemy unit up ahead. This little, this little, uh, red square here. That is an enemy unit that is still some distance out. Now, it's not that powerful of an enemy unit, so I don't really have to worry about it. Your accompanying ship should be able to take care of it on its own. Do note, I say should. I'm not making promises here. Is he serious? Or is he just building anticipation? You will find out. Alright, so I have a little doorway here. Next, let's expand this. There's really no reason not to. You're gonna need room. Make some room. Quick, I'm going to show you the difference between keyboard mode and mouse mode. Right now I am in mouse mode. This means where I move my mouse is where I'm going to place the block. Over here, over here, I can place it anywhere I, I want over here. But I can only place one at a time, like this. And if I am removing them, it is the same, one at a time. 
And sometimes in mouse mode you can go through a block and delete a block behind it, which is kind of annoying. Whereas in keyboard mode, if I push F3, now my mouse adjusts where I am looking, but not where I'm placing the block. What's the advantage of this? Well, if I face in this direction and then hold the build key down, I can build much faster. Also, both keys will build. This way will build forwards. The other key will build backwards. To delete, I need to cover something and then click the build and it will remove it. The other neat thing about keyboard mode is if you don't want to destroy something, if something is, say, sitting on top of this and you don't want it gone, which, if you remove this, it will. It will fall apart. If you hold the Shift key and then build, it will change the block without destroying it. Useful. Extend that a little bit that way. This is where I'm going to put my next line of resource gatherers. I have slightly OCD, there's no real other reason to be doing it this way. So I have this nice line here. I will get some Processed resources and oops. processed resource. Nope, raw resource. I need the oh resource gather. It is in processed resource. My mistake. So placing here one, two, three, four, five. Now you'll note the power is going down by fifty each time I place one. So there is a limit to how many I can make. You do need oil as much as you do, you do need oil and you do need, whoops, ah, uh, the fishing hole, that is my base, is in range of the first unit. I am being attacked. I'll click yes to view this on the map. There they are. Ah, and you'll see this no little thing here. Notification of how long I have until I am attacked. With this time, if I have another unit, I can bring another unit in here to help me with, with the fight. I don't have another unit, and I don't really need another unit. Now, can you start the battle without waiting 120 seconds? Yes. <coughs> Select the unit, and you'll notice these little swords here. If I click them, they will start the battle now. First, an explanation. When a battle starts, when, a battle, when you are blockaded, before the battle starts, you are out of play. That means you cannot move, you cannot build, you cannot do anything with the units that are blockaded, the units that are being attacked. You can do stuff with units that are outside of the blockade, but you have 120 seconds to do it before the fight starts. I'm going to start the fight a little early, because, as I said, you don't need help in this part. Now, from here, I am still out of play. Why? Because I have not begun the battle. Now, I can cancel the battle, I can retreat, and I can take some damage or possibly lose my fortress, lose my ship. I'm just going to begin the battle. And here we see our accompanying ship go to work against the enemy ship. Oh, for those wondering how I move so fast, hold down the shift key and you, your camera will move faster. This 
to me is the best part of From the Depths. Not the building, but watching stuff get blown to crap. Excuse me, Mom. I'm getting a little teary-eyed at this. Damaged. That means it's about to die. When this hits zero, it will despawn. It will fall apart. Now, I can also hit escape, which will stop the combat, but it will still despawn. You can use this in large-scale battles to help things uh, go a little bit faster. It, to your ships, at least. Battle finished. Now we see how to scavenge. Well, uh, easiest way for me is to split these forces into two fleets. There's your rapier, there's the boat. We click on that, we tell it to come over here. And it's going to move over, gradually. I'm going to pull things out of play and increase the speed, because I don't have a lot of time. As it goes over there, you'll notice the X goes away. That X was where the ship sank, and where all the resources were. This... This ship now has resources inside of it that I can send to the base. How do I do that? Well, I click here. Select fleets... Uh, set the selected fleets to be supply fleets, and fleets they will give from and take to. You're going to give to the fishing hole, your fortress, and the fortress is going to take from the rapier. Now, when the rapier moves back to the fortress, times 10 to make this faster, it dumps most of its cargo back to the base. Up here, you can set how much it gives. I'm going to set it to actually give everything back to the base, because, oh, you can see it all go there. I'm going to set it to give everything back to the base, because, uh, well, it, the rapier really won't need it when I'm done. Hit R to exit resource mode, get rid of all that. And bring these play forces sorry, back into play. And now I can see them again. So there's your first battle. You really don't need to do anything against the in the first battle. But what you do need to do is expand your resources, your resource gatherers. You need to gather natural resource, that's your metal, your scrap, your crystal. And you need to gather oil. Naturally, this is because your ships, all ships, even your fortress, will consume fuel. I have 250 power remaining, that means I can have five more. One, two, three, four, five. That brings me down to zero. Running at 99% efficiency, that means I'm actually using more power than I have, so I'm going to get rid of one of these, and they're all running at 100%. And that's the start of the campaign. You've won your first battle, and you are on your way to processing more resources to expand your base. We'll end it here for now.